Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how I built the frame and the face for the upper part of the cabinets on the built-ins that I've been building in our playroom. Since I knew I was going to be painting these built-ins, I went with the painter's grade half inch plywood. So this is still a cabinet grade plywood. It just doesn't have the wood look that you would need for staining. So it's a bit cheaper than the merch or the the maple and the birch that you would find at Home Depot and Lowe's. I like to clamp boards to plywood whenever I'm cutting it with a circular saw. That just helps me cut a quick and easy, perfectly straight line every time. I also like to use a square for marking um, pencil lines on either side of the plywood to know where I'm gonna line up my shelves. So the pencil line on the inside helps me line up the top of the shelf to that line and the pencil line on the outside of the cabinet box is going to be where I know where I need to put my brad nails when I'm assembling. So I keep my brad nails just to the side of those of that pencil line and I know I'm not going to be getting the brad nails outside of that shelf. Make sure you apply a lot of wood glue whenever you're using just wood glue and brad nails to assemble anything. In a long run, that wood glue is actually what's going to be holding the build together. The brad nails just help hold everything tight while that glue dries. I also like to sand off the edges of that plywood before I start assembling. It just makes it a little bit easier after I've got assembly done to clean everything up if I have less sanding once I have all those corners and edges that need to be sanded. Because my two upper cabinets are so big, they are about three feet wide and five and a half feet high, I went with two fixed shelves in the middle of the upper cabinet. So this is just gonna help hold everything square and make those upper cabinets really strong over the long run. So I'm hoping this, built, this wall of built-ins is here 25, 30 years from now when someone else is owning this house. After assembling this upper cabinet with the two fixed shelves in the middle and the top and the bottom that I needed for the upper cabinets, I used wood glue, again, everywhere, all along the back of that plywood upper cabinet, wood glue and brad nails to attach a quarter inch plywood as the backing for this cabinet. When you are putting together cabinet um, carcasses or frames or boxes, you are gonna be needing to change the length of your brad nails as you're going. Um, when I'm attaching this quarter inch plywood to the back in a minute, I'm gonna be using three quarter inch, maybe one inch long brad nails. So I don't wanna to go too long with those brad nails because what happens is the brad nail enters the plywood and if it's too long, they can sometimes start to change angles and they'll pop out in places and you'll have to just spend a lot of time digging them out and removing them and patching those holes. So you always wanna pick the right length of a brad nail when you're assembling anything, especially um, with these plywood structures here. Have a wet rag handy whenever you're using wood glue to assemble plywood or lumber together too. So you can quickly wipe away that wood glue that might squeeze out anywhere so that you don't have to deal with it later when you go to finish your cabinet or whatever you're building. Just always try to wipe away that wood glue as much as possible. I use quite a lot of brad nails along the back of this just to make sure that plywood is held really tight against the frame while that wood glue dries again. And I got my square out and, and lined up those where those shelves were so I knew where to put the brad nails along the back of the shelves there too. So that pencil and T-square um, is a great way to know where to hit those brad nails so that you don't have to worry about it or make mistakes. Once all of the brad nails are into the plywood backing, let that wood glue dry before you move the upper cabinet again. Next, I used wood glue and my brad nailer again to add some extra support to the base of the cabinet. So if you can see here, that bottom shelf is an inch and a half up from the bottom of the sides of the upper cabinet. So I'm adding two pieces of half inch plywood to make that level with the bottom of the sides of the upper cabinet and it gives that whole structure um, a bigger area to sit on when I attach it to the base cabinet later. So you can see I did that on both sides of the bottom of the upper cabinet that I'm building.
Once that was done, I was ready to make and attach the face frame for this upper cabinet. So for the face frame, I thought I was gonna use pocket holes for the entire face frame, assemble it in the garage, and then move it into the room and attach the face frame to the upper cabinet all in one go. But pocket holes can be kind of a pain sometimes, and no matter how well you clamp the pieces together, how well you line everything up, they can sometimes shift a bit when you're trying to join two pieces together with pocket holes. And every time I tried to do this, I ended up with about an eighth of an inch, maybe a sixteenth of an inch um, difference in the lineup for those pieces of lumber. And I hated that. I hate when you see that. I wanted the face frame for the upper cabinets to be perfectly flat and flush and looking like, like somebody else built it, a professional, not me. <laughs> So at this point, I decided I was just gonna use wood glue and my brad nailer again to attach the face frame to this upper cabinet. Now, as you can see here, I'm using three quarter inch select pine as the face frame for this upper cabinet. Again, I am painting this, I'm not staining it. So that, that affects the decisions you're gonna make in the build and what materials and joinery that you're gonna use when you're building your own upper cabinet. So I started by attaching the piece of the face frame that I wanted to be perfect when it lined up with the side of that plywood. So I made sure as I was moving along, I, I used wood glue again, of course, and the brad nailer. Um, I made sure that I, as I was moving the brad nailer up that board, I was lining up that select pine with that plywood to get it perfectly straight and flush. So when I paint this upper cabinet, you won't be able to see the seam between the face frame and the plywood. So once I had that side completely attached and the upper piece attached, I moved on to attaching the bottom piece of select pine. Like I said before, I built that shelf so that it was an inch and a half up so that this piece of select pine fit perfectly, um, lined up with that shelf nicely and gave me some space for attaching cabinet doors eventually and having a little bit of room um, along the bottom of the cabinet door before it was the top of this, um, the countertop. When I attached the face frame pieces to each of the shelves, so the one and a half inch select pine pieces to each of the shelves, I am using wood glue all along the length of that shelf, and I'm using brad nails every few inches. So I want that, um, the face of that shelf to also be an extra support for it over the years to fight any sag that may occur. So make sure that you get that face frame completely attached all along the middle and have as much strength built into this upper cabinet as you can get when um, you're assembling it. So I wanna point out that if I had decided to stain these built-ins, I would have built them in a completely different way with completely different material. So I'm using the painter's grade plywood instead of stain grade plywood and I'm using half inch plywood instead of three quarter inch plywood. If I had decided to stain the built-ins, I would have used three quarter inch plywood so that I could use pocket hole joinery and um, have all of those pocket holes sort of hidden inside of the build instead of all of the brad nails on the outside of the frame that I have now. I also probably would have framed or d built the face with something other than select pine if I was gonna be staining it. I probably would have used that stain grade plywood so that I could keep the same um, stain look all the way across the cabinets. Painting your built-ins means that you can take a few shortcuts, save a little bit of money and a little bit of effort and do things the little bit quicker way. When you build your upper cabinets or any cabinets with glue and brad nails instead of pocket holes or some other kind of joinery, you will have a lot of nails to fill. So this is something that you really only wanna do when you're gonna paint the cabinets. So I use spackling on all of the nail holes. I find that it actually fills the nail holes quicker and makes it really nice and level so that once you paint this, you are not going to see any nail holes here. And all of the lines or any of the joints where two boards come together are then filled with caulk. So all along the back, on the inside, anywhere that you have lines, I, I fill with caulk. I added a little bit more detail to the upper cabinets that I built for the built-ins. Um, and actually it's on the lower cabinets too. It's just a bit of molding that adds detail, but it also brings the drawers and the doors 
five or six inches away from the wall so that they're easier to use. I also had to account for the arched opening on this side of the built-ins. So adding that extra five inches means that I can open these drawers without hitting this arched opening. So there's a lot to think about when you're designing the built-ins for your home, how things are gonna open, the layout, symmetry, everything that you wanna think about before you design your built-ins. I designed the bump out or this extra bit of detail here based on uh, the fluted details and the woodwork that is already in our 25 year old home. So if you have a newer home or like a different style, you might want something like cove molding and one by twos framing something like this out. There are a lot of different options. If you just look at pictures of built-ins on Pinterest or online, you can sort of get an idea for how you want to design your built-ins. But that's it for now, guys. I'll be sharing a lot more videos and details about the DIY projects that were involved with building these built-ins. So stick around and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.